So, we're gonna add the, um, a new ride. So we will create two contents, because otherwise we will spend the whole uh, hour and a half uh, creating content. So, what was I planning already? Yeah, we're going to... How, um, it, it, actually, we will describe our journey to Rovinj, from Lyon to Rovinj, cycling. Uh, it took us, what, two days and a half? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that. <laughs> so, trip to Rovinj. <laughs> uh, so, this was a nice trip, uh, but very very long. Uh, and this... Uh, when you select uh, some text, you have the, the, the rich text uh, pop-up that you can, that you can uh, use. So let's... Uh, just for you to, sh uh, to, to show you. It's cur currently uh, still uh, alpha, but it's, it's working pretty well already. So, okay. Um, so, first uh, rider is me. Or you can add it yourself if you want. <laughs> so, you need to add your email. And the second one is Bertrand. That's enough for this. Oh, I cannot. No, I can't. Uh, distance, it, it was 830 kilometers. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, from Lyon, France, locate address, to <laughs> Ravinge. Croatia. All right. And difficulty, of course, it's Iron Man. We even had to swim uh, from Venice to, uh, to here. So with our bike, so you can imagine. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, everything is set. Now we can publish. Here it is. Woo! We have our first content. Let's create another one. Create whatever you want. <laughs> um, so create. No. No, he doesn't want. No, he doesn't want. Yeah, you're right. So let's go to the content tree. No, I. Oh, yeah, here. Easy. Well. <clears throat> We'll have to report this to Damien. <laughs> Let's create from the root <laughs> another content. Right. Here we go. So this is a trip on the French Riviera. So nice trip on the French Riviera. Uh, good trip on the seaside, from Saint Raphael to Saint Tropez, of course. You know, maybe you don't want to know this French song, Coquillage et Crustacé. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our writer is John Doe. Uh, and uh, John at Doe.com. This domain was very expensive. <laughs> it's something like 40 kilometers, so yeah. Let's locate Saint Raphael, France. Cool. And Saint Tropez, France. And of course, if I zoom in, I have my Saint Tropez. Cool. Well, difficulty, it's clearly amateur, because it's 
huge uh, bike lane all the way, so and very flat. So it's for rookies. And publish. So now we have two content, uh, but we don't have any code. If you try to load the um, uh, the root of your uh, of your domain, uh, you will have this exception because we don't have any view for uh, for the for uh, the home page. So I will try to to be a bit quicker. So I will jump on uh, a few steps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because uh, creating uh, the first step is of uh, of course to create a page layout, so the main layout with the uh, base block. So what I will do is to jump on the next um, uh, on the next step and, sh and just show you how it is done. So uh, first, you can uh, do a git checkout. I think it's v1. What? Uh. Ah. <laughs> Git checkout v0.1. Of course, it's not a v1. <laughs> Adding page layout and base home templates, yes. So, now, in our bundle, if you look carefully, you will see in the views the page layout.html.twig. So this is the, the main layout we created out of the index.html, which was coming from the HTML developer. And of course, we had to do a few changes here because as you, uh, well, the, the, the HTML developer uh, did some... Uh, we have relative path here, CSS slash style.css. It's the main issue. Same with images, and um, uh, th those assets are located in our in our bundle. And of course, it doesn't match with our um, uh, with real life uh, application path. So this is the first thing that we need to change, and. Uh, here you can see it's the same markup, but we I added uh, a few blocks. For example, here the metas with the so we can, for example, uh, in the future, edit this the title. Um, I added the CSS block, and now we are using the asset. Um, the asset the tweak function, so that we can we we point the right CSS at the right place. This is very Symfony standard. Okay, this is there there is no easy magic here. Same for um, images. Uh, can find one here. It's exactly the same. For your information, I do this in one go with a regex. So. I can show it to you. No, it's not here. Here. This is the regexp. <laughs> In PHP Storm, well, uh, do it whatever you prefer. But uh, with this regexp, I just uh, do a, a search replace uh, within PHP Storm. I like regexp. Don't know if you too, but anyway. Uh, so it's already okay. And most important, we have here two blocks. Uh, the, the most important one, a header block and a content block. And here uh, we had uh, in, in index.html, we had uh, this, the header part here that I uh, wiped out, and the content, the content one, which is starting here, this section. So this will go in the sub template. We'll we'll see this uh, in in a while. Well, why not seeing this right now? Actually, 
So this, these templates are uh, in the views folder. So you have the page layout here, and in full, we have the home one. And what is doing the home one? It's well, still very uh, symphony st uh, standard. It extends our layout. And so we, ext we are extending blocks here. The header one with the markup for the header and the content block with the, con with the markup for the content. So because I, I think it's important, at least for easy published legacy users, uh, Twig and uh, Symfony behave very differently uh, in this regard from legacy. Um, the base principle is that uh, you will render a main template. This template will like, extend, in this case, the page layout. So when you render like, a bike ride, uh, you will say it extends my page layout to my, my whole design with the HTML uh, head, body, and everything. And it, uh, I will, in this template, replace blocks. So when rendering a ride, you will render the whole thing and replace the contents block that is empty in the page layout with whatever you want to display for your ride. So it's kind of reversed from what we knew uh, in EasyPublish Legacy. And it's actually much, much more convenient. Yes. It's a very well-designed system. So for now, uh, we only have still static markup. This is on purpose. Um, Easy, uh, Easy Platform is uh, using dynamic content loading with dynamic URLs and stuff. So now we need to tell the system that for the home page, we want to, to, uh, to load this template. Like uh, in Legacy, it was done in override.ini, but this uh, very old age is now. So in, if you open easypublish.yaml in easypublish.config, Um, for this, the, the, we added here in location view um, a selection rule for that. So basically, um, I uh, don't know if, I uh, can't remember if uh, Bertrand explained the site access. Uh, well, then maybe it's time. What is the site access? So, uh, well, site accesses, well, those of you who know legacy are familiar with the concept. Uh, it's like an extra layer of settings. Uh, in Symfony, by default, uh, once you're in your environment, you have your settings, and that's kind of the end of it. Uh, what we have is an intermediate thing where you will uh, define different set of settings. Uh, let's say one, for instance, for your mobile site and one from the, for the main site. And depending on conditions, uh, you will match one or the other so that you get maybe different templates or different parameters depending on the context. Uh, this is the site access. So we have defined here a site access named site. Uh, we have only one, so we don't have much to match. Uh, we have a site group where you can group uh, site accesses that go together uh, in one group so that we can have common settings. That's new from legacy, and it's been requested quite a lot. Instead of duplicating settings like in 12 site access, you can now avoid this. It's quite a good thing. And then uh, you have to match site access. In that case, it's pretty simple. Uh, we just match on the first item uh, after the host name. So if we have slash site, it will go to sites. Of course, it's also the default one, so if you don't have anything, it will just use sites. But then we have plenty of ways to match, like matching by host name. Uh, you could match uh, the right language depending on the TLD that is used. Uh, you could use a different port. Um, or you can even uh, implement your own matcher if you want to, uh, to do some mobile detec detection, for instance. Or IP range or whatever for intranet. Uh, there are plenty of solutions. This one is the most simple. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an important thing and it's used kind of all over the place and actually uh, layout settings like uh, location view and so on are actually per site access. So here if we had a mobile site, we could have a different template when viewing location 2 um, just by adding another block for mobile site instead of in addition to site above. So m most of uh, the settings from Easy Platform itself are site access aware. Yeah. So this is basically you can see it as a context, uh, application context. 
uh, we plan to externalize this system so that uh, even Symfony developers can use it without using uh, Easy Platform. Uh, because it's quite convenient uh, as you can uh, have uh, runtime uh, settings that you cannot have with a pure Symfony application. So, uh, in, uh, under location view, so we are basically, when you're accessing to a canonical URL, it's basically a location, a location that holds the content. Um, and we have, uh, we, you can have uh, different view types. Uh, by default and by convention, we call the um, uh, full, the view type, uh, when you're directly accessing to a location. So, uh, the, for the home page, uh, we, are, we are using the full, uh, the full view uh, for the home page. Uh, if you're directly accessing to a ride view, that, well, what, that's what we'll do uh, 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 later, it will be the full view for uh, a ride. But in, in, the, in the home page, remember, uh, not, the, not here, it was there. On the home page, there is also a list of rides, right? And here, what we will do is to uh, actually embed line views. So this is a different view type for the same content of the same location embedding content. And then again, it's one of uh, those elements uh, that will have to match your particular site. If you have like a, a box uh, layout, you can have a view called box. Uh, when you decide to render content using a particular view, I will say render with a, on the box view. You can have then the line view, maybe you have a table for um, a matrix of elements, uh, then you ha could have a table row. It's up to you. The only uh, real convention that is kind of hard-coded is full. Full right. and yeah, full and line. We use it uh, all over the place. But full is the the, the only uh, mandatory one. one. Yeah. So you have here the view type full, which is the default one uh, in the in the main view controller. Uh, here is an identifier that, uh, of your own. So us usually we use the um, content type. So here let's call it home. Um, so the full view of the home, and the same way we'll have full view of a ride, full view of an article, or land view of an article, and so on. Uh, the template that we will use, so it's a uh, uh, standard um, identifier for, um, standard path for a, a template uh, in Symfony. So name of the bundle, subfolder, and name of the, of the file. And here we, we define a match rule. So when do we need to load this template? We need to load it when, you're, when we are on the top uh, content tree. So to simplify, uh, it's, all, uh, it's usually the location ID 2. Uh, so we, to simplify, we just uh, use this one. And that's, that's it. We have a plenty of matchers, different matchers, like content type identifiers, uh, even a lot, uh, a lot of I can't remember <laughs> depth uh, section. Uh, yeah, and you can combine them. Yeah, you can have a, a like a content type identifier ride for section uh, standard and uh, uh, other ones. So you can combine them for that. You can also have a logical or. <laughs> well, it's uh, that's quite flexible, and you can even implement your own. For instance, you could have something that will use a different template uh, depending on the difficulty, for, an, for example, or depending on the category. Yeah. So, with everything uh, set like, like this, if I reload the home, hopefully I won't have any exception. So is... <laughs> Is this particular part uh, clear? Because it's, it's really important. It's the core of uh, designing, building a website with Easy Platform. For, new, for newcomers, for Easy Publish legacy users. So from leg legacy, this replaces a variety. Right and for others, well, it's how you uh, configure what you use in which circumstances to render what. 
So we still, now we have uh, our static ma markup, but correctly uh, integrated inside in the system. So at least we don't have any exception. And we will customize this uh, if we have time at the end. So what we need to do now is to, uh, we, well, we want to, uh, to display our, uh, our content. Um, so, can't remember how it is, uh, okay, how it is called. Okay, it's trip to Ravinge. So I want to display trip dash to dash to Ravinge. And of course, I don't have my template yet, so I will need to design it right now. We need a default one, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do? Do I do live coding or do what do I need to do? I don't know what I need to do to remove this uh, bad exception. Any clue? Come on, somebody give it a shot. Nicola, maybe, or <laughs> Thomas, or <laughs> what do I need to do now to to display uh, to display a ride? I need to first to create the template for sure, and then to get the template to be used. Because well, if I'll we just have the template, we'll have a template sitting around doing nothing. I'll we need to add. This can you click, for example, on the right. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Bravo. Uh, so first, we will create, of course, the template. Uh, so we will create it inside the, the full views, full folder, new file. Uh, so it's a ride.html.twig. Um, we have the ride view.html coming from the um, the HTML developer. So, what do we need to do here? Is first to cr to create the content block. So block. Con uh, no, 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 no. Extends first. <laughs> uh, so it's easy summer bike page layout. Um, if you're using PHP Storm, uh, the Symphony plugin is awesome. You will hear the if you use PHP Storm phrase a lot <laughs> during these uh, presentations. Block content. Okay. So what do I put in my content block? I just open the right view that the static HTML stuff. And I have a shitload of stuff. <laughs> so I basically need the content here. Yeah, it's the, the, the HTML developer was nice. The front-end developer was nice. Uh, he added uh, a few comments. So I will need everything till, I don't know, till the footer. So I'm just copying the markup and pasting this inside the content block. So about blocks, uh, if here we needed, for instance, to load a custom, uh, <coughs> custom style sheet or uh, change the footer, we, we could just add a block a footer and change the contents of the footer or add something uh, to the existing footer. That uh, that's how you use blocks in Twig. This is exactly what I'm going to do because it's not sufficient. Sorry. Uh, here, uh, the, the front-end developer added uh, also JavaScript that was not in the page layout. Hope, uh, well, fortunately, uh, in the page layout, uh, I added um, a block named footer underscore JS. So I can override this one in my, in my template. So that's what I'm going to do. Where is it? Here. I'm adding a new block here. Footer JS. But I don't want to uh, override it completely. I just want to, uh, to, uh, to, to add the, 
the parent one, like jQuery and, and bootstrap uh, shit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to call, first call the parent, just like what you, you would have done in uh, PHP. <laughs> this will display what is in uh, the page layout. Here, it will display this. Now I want to add my own code, so which is in right view.html, and I have at the I have a lot of JavaScript here for Google Maps. So I'll just copy this and paste it right there. Here we go. We have our uh, st quite static uh, JavaScript code because we will need to, c to customize it depending on the content. Uh, I think we have uh, other stuff uh, in a right view, like uh, the model, uh, yeah, portfolio stuff. Well, we won't uh, dynamize them, but we'll add them any, anyway. So it's in the content. Just below the content, we will add the model stuff. Here. So for now, we just paste it, well, copy-paste it from the, from the HTML static web page to, uh, to the twig file. Uh, we don't have the configuration yet, so we'll add this, uh, add it right now. So in easypublish.yaml. Uh, I'm editing easypublish.yaml to simplify, but in a real life project, you will uh, most likely add this to, uh, inside your bundle and import it into uh, Easy Publish YAML. It's more portable. So it's a full, full view. That's great. Right. The template is Easy Summer Bike Bundle Full uh, Ride.html.twig. Here you go and match, no, it's identifier backslash content type. And it's a ride. We're using the uh, content type identifier here. So logically, it should not crash. Let's try that, try that. So it's a bit long because it's uh, recompiling the container every time. And now I have uh, internet access for Google Maps. <laughs> OK, our template is loaded, but it's still static because we, we didn't add, uh, we didn't dynamize it yet. And but ha, ah, we have broken links here. Yeah, we need to replace with the asset manager from, uh, from Symfony. So I will use the regexp. To do this in one go. Okay, so it will match everything. And I replace with this. Replace all. Oh, what did I do? It worked last time. Uh, it should be fine. What the fuck? Oh no, it's because it's in, in JavaScript here. So that's, that's normal. Okay. That should be fine. Well, if you prefer to go manually, your choice. Let's check if it's okay now. 
Ah, much better. Are you fans of uh, regu regular expressions? Yeah. <laughs> Are you fans of migraines? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is very nice, but we don't have uh, our content from the trip to Ravinj, so we will need to, to, uh, to do real uh, easy template stuff here. So, <clears throat> first, what we uh, usually suggest is to um, add um, uh, internationalization I18N. Well, I will show for one. <laughs> so basically, uh, static labels like this one, we do this. And that's again nothing uh, particular to uh, to easy. It's just uh, the normal twig and uh, symphony interna international internationalization system. So yeah, usually you do that, and uh, a best practice would be to use identifiers, not full um, full strings. But, but you will find plenty of debates about yes. that uh, online. So but, the right. But basically, it will take as input what you give. It will look uh, for a translation in the configured files, like uh, Croatian or French or German translation, and replace it uh, with whatever it finds. So a normal static translation system. So here I have, yes. OK. Um, is it possible to use translations that um, someone can edit in the back, uh, in an admin panel? For labels, you mean? Yeah. No, currently no. You, you're using, um, uh, well, we recommend like Symfony to use uh, XLIF. Uh, I think there are a few bundles that can make you uh, from, I can't remember, uh, Jonas Schmidt, uh, which uh, can integrate a f uh, some kind of admin panel, but it's not integrated in uh, platform UI. So. Okay. And uh, overall, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there was, or if, or if it was possible to have like an advanced solution where professional translators uh, can translate strings, maybe with server and stuff. Yes, it's an it's an open system. So XLIF is one of the formats. Uh, it supports like more formats. Yeah, YAML, uh, uh, TS files like uh, Qt files like we used in the past and stuff like that. But XLIF is a standard. So uh, if if you have uh, translators. Uh, usually, the best would be to uh, to use uh, online services for this. Uh, like, uh, uh, no, I don't remember the service, <laughs> but usually, usually you need to pay for them. Right. So uh, I have my title here. I will need to dynamize it. Don't know if it's a word, but make it dynamic. Make make it dynamic. Yes. So, uh, you remember it was um, uh, t the title one. So, there are um, a few possibilities here. The one that we usually recommend is to do easy render field with the content. So, content is uh, one of the variable, default variables you get in this kind of templates. You get temp uh, content, you get location, so pointing to the current content and pointing to the current location. Uh, and we want to display the ride field. Yeah, sorry. The title field. <laughs> uh, this uh, using easy render field uh, will load um, a default template uh, for rendering the, um, uh, the field type. So here we are using the text line field type, I don't, if, you, if you remember. So we have a default template for it. And if I reload, wow, it's fast. Here we go. But well, we have uh, some kind of an issue here because uh, it's a front-end developer thing. The CSS was not w so well designed. Because if, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Because the problem is here. If you inspect it, 
using easy render field, you will have a span here inside. So the CSS is not very planned for this. So instead, I would use the row, row value. So it's easy field value, same arguments. And if I leave it like this, it will use a two string to the value object. So it should be fine now. Here we go. It's, it's much better. Uh, as it's also the content name, uh, an alternative would have been to use an easy content name so that it would, be, it would not use the field but the name, the translated name. Well, that's the third uh, approach. Um, then here we can uh, edit the distance. So again, we will not use, uh, it's in a H, uh, uh, in a header um, uh, tag. <laughs> um, so now I don't trust the front-end developer anymore. So I will use the row value. So easy field value, content, and it was distance. But it won't be sufficient, uh, or oh, maybe it will. All, value, uh, f all field values are, uh, have a two-string method. So most of them could be, could, could be used uh, in templates like this. So now if I reload. Yeah, it's fine. 822, ah, not bad. Haha, uh, -ha. for the difficulty. So now we need to tweak a little bit. Uh, it's a three star. Remember, we have a selection with Amateur, uh, Intermediate, and uh, Iron Man. Uh, and it's zero indexed. But here we have three star uh, we have stars. So we can, uh, we will have to tweak it a bit. So we can see that the designer uh, used an I HTML tag. So easy selection has a multi, um, uh, have a multi multiple selection thing. So let me remember, I don't remember. Huh, okay. Uh, easy render field won't work here because uh, it's it's a custom one. If you, if I use easy render field, I will have uh, I think the the index uh, the zero index stuff. So I will use easy field value so that I have the the field value for easy selection. Uh, and then I, uh, I will get the, uh, select, uh, the, the selected uh, index. So it's, as it's zero based, I will be able to do some loop, uh, zero based loop uh, here, to uh, display the stars. Let's try this. So uh, it, I think it's so set uh, select, uh, difficulty. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Difficulty. Easy field value. Content difficulty. And then we'll do. As I don't have uh, access to the document, so 
So we need to do a for loop. And with for, you can uh, make it like a f um, uh, int, int, uh, integer based one. So starting from zero, point, point, uh, difficulty. No, it's for uh, level, let's say, in. And here it's selection. Pipe first. So what do we do here? Uh, so we're getting the, the row field value. It's an object with one property, which is selection. Selection is actually uh, uh, an array of index. So we would, uh, as we, it's uh, only one, um, we have only one possibility of uh, selection. We just t uh, taking the first one. So using this uh, twig uh, filter. So this will basically give us uh, the. I think for. For a trip to revenge, it was Iron Man, so it will ga give us the uh, two index. For the for loop, um, the for loop uh, makes it possible to count from uh, zero to uh, another value. So this is exactly what we're doing. The, the syntax is, is here to add a dot dot. It's the same than uh, in PHP to uh, using a for with a index. And n4. And I think, oops. This should suffice. So if I do this on the same line. Mm hmm. Not sure. Yeah, it's working. So, yes, sometimes you will have to um, trick a bit, like like here, because you need to match what the the front end the developer gave you. So, it's uh, here. It's a, it's it's some nice trick using the using using the raw field value. Um, the starting point. Let's do the same. Starting point using easy field value. Content. Oops. And it was starting point. Uh, the, f the field value for um, uh, map location has an address property, so let's call the address. I think even you, it, you can leave it like this. Same for endpoints. Easy field value, content, and points. Yeah, no exception so far. Uh, just tell me if I'm I, if I'm going too fast. Okay. So silent. I hope you are not sleeping. Oh, there is a, the author. I forgot this one. The thing is that we have several ones, so we will need again to loop. For Rider in uh, easy field value content uh, writer dot authors and for uh, writer dot name. So uh, just one about, about fields. Um, each field type uh, has a value class. 
And this value is based, it's a very simple class that just has uh, basic attributes, usually nothing uh, more complicated than an, an array or a string. Um, they're all documented online on uh, DocuZeno. You have a full reference of all field types and it says which uh, field can be used for what. And uh, that's what you can directly use in templates as well as PHP code or even the REST API actually. Yeah, I'm doing this uh, just by <laughs> because I remember uh, the, the prop available properties, but uh, documentation on those objects are quite extensive. But usually if you just open like, for instance, like let's say author and just want to quickly check without going online what's inside an author field value, uh, just open the a class uh, that's named like author backslash value and you will have the class and it's, it has no logic, maybe just a two string and it has properties and that's the end of it. Uh, anyway, I can show you in the, in the documentation. So here, for example, the author field type here. In the field type reference, Okay, it's not right. <laughs> Some of them are better documented than others, but we will speak about uh, contributing to this later. Okay, bad example. <laughs> yes, author value. So, author backslash value. You open it with the uh, PHP Storm or whatever. And here, you can see that I have a public author's uh, property. Well, actually, it's an author collection, but it's still author collection will be a very simple uh, class uh, that, an only, that is only used for this particular field type. And uh, it's an author class, uh, maybe it's this one. Yes, so you have the ID, the name, and the email. Back to the right, the description. So. Here, uh, I will remove all this text. And it's a rich text. So I don't want to, um, to bother with the whole uh, transformation because rich text, as uh, Bertrand explained in the presentation, uh, is um, actually stored in, a in doc book format. So it's an XML dialect. It's not H pure HTML, and it's very important for the rest. So what I'm going to do here is an easy render field. Content description. Uh, so for those familiar with the legacy, uh, rich text uh, replaces XML text. So XML text uh, can be rendered. Uh, it has been supported since 5.0 until 5.0. Uh, 5.4 and the next version, but it won't be extended anymore because, well, it's a 10, almost 15 years old format. Uh, it won't evolve that much. Uh, this one is based on DuckBook because DuckBook is widely supported, very extensible, and we are able to render it using XSLT. So it's really more powerful than it was before. But usually you don't want to, but you, you don't even want to think about going for the raw value. No. This one, uh, it's pure XML, so it's, trans it's transformed by the default, uh, um, default ta rendering template. And like before, uh, custom tags can be created, uh, rendering can be extended, and so on. So now... Okay, we have the description, but I have uh, some issue here. Maybe it's because of the, si the screen size. <laughs> I can blame the designer, yes. <laughs> but I think it's because of uh, screen size. No, 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 the div is okay. It's just uh, overlapping. So it's supposed to be, um, how do you say, uh, responsive. So this is why it's uh, a bit overlapping. It's b bad, uh, very low uh, definition here. Uh, we are almost finished here. We just need to uh, customize the map. <coughs> so the map is actually uh, customized thanks to the JavaScript at the bottom um, because we have the locations defined here. Uh, of course, we don't want all of those. We only need, for now, 
the starting point and the end point. So the starting point here, we need, of course, the name of the starting point. So we will use, again, easy field value. Uh, content uh, things starting points and it will show the address and where is yeah we need the latitude and the longitude so here it is oh maybe I should use a variable here. So, set starting point. I'm lazy. Here it is. So, starting point dot address and Starting point, oops, dot latitude. And starting point, dot longitude. And we'll do the same for uh, endpoints. So, up, oh, let's duplicate this endpoints. And, well, not sure it's the same markup, so I will not duplicate the line. So here, of course, it's not starting point, it's end point. And uh, here it's endpoint as well. And I think it's okay now. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, it doesn't draw, but uh, this is a front end developer task. We don't care. Uh, <laughs> but we have our right starting point and the right. Endpoints. So, Lyon, France, yeah, it's okay. And if I try, uh, okay, I will edit this. <laughs> it's a bit long. So, uh, one thing I, I think should be explained uh, how do we go from this URL we have to uh, rendering something? Uh, it's actually just a couple steps. Uh, so when we go to the front end and uh, enter the link um, trip to Ravinge or a nice trip to the Riviera, uh, what is done is that it uses uh, this dynamic router we have because uh, what is done in Symfony, wh whenever you have a request, it will first try to find a route for it. Of course, we don't. Usually, you define your routes in your writing YAML file. You say this path uh, leads to this controller. We can't do this because we can't require, require that content editors add items to routing YAML. This doesn't work. What we have instead is this dynamic router that will go take this URI and look it up as an URL alias. And this alias is something that is automatically generated for every location based on the hierarchy. So let's say if we had created a trips folder and inside it trip to revenge, it would have created an alias that would have been trips slash trip to revenge. Like this. Exactly. Uh, if you had had multiple languages, it would have used whatever most, what closest translation is available, like uh, Croatian or French or German for each of the parts. And based on, on this, it will find which location it matches. So it will find that it's a location and it will map it to the... Um, to the route that renders location and to the location view controller. So once we're in the location view controller, uh, it says, okay, now I'm rendering location with this ID, with this view name, full, and with optionally arguments. 
then it does stuff and it says, render this. At this point, it will go and check the configuration for views, uh, take a look for a location view, because we are viewing a location, that matches the full view, and that matches whatever is in the request. So in that case, a ride. And it will render it, use your templates, uh, the content, location, and stuff will be assigned to the template, and that's it. It's all done transparently, but given that you can and uh, will have to, in some cases, override the controller, it's kind of important to understand what is going on. So it's always alias matching a location view that is rendered using the location view thing and configuration. That's the basics. And now I, I pointed on, uh, on my second content, and I, we can see that everything has been filled correctly. The map is okay, the title is okay, the level is okay, so our trick uh, worked. Everything is, uh, m has been matched correctly from the content. We don't have the point of interest, so this is the, the pictures that we, that we won't cover for, for now. Five minutes? No, it's, we have 20 minutes. Lunch is at, is at uh, 12.45. Okay. So, we have a right view now. Uh, I hope it's... <laughs> well, it was quite fast. Uh, but for now, we don't have the, the list here. The list is still static. So, what I will uh, show... Uh, like for the page layout, because uh, we ha I have uh, quite some code. Uh, I will quickly jump to the last step uh, to, to show you and uh, explain the code that, is, that has been uh, uh, added. So if you want to follow this, you need to just check out to master. Okay. Fuck. No me. <laughs> right. Of course, it's recompiling again. But with PHP 7, it's fast. That was easy. That was easy. Right. So, uh, of course, here it works. We have the list. Let me show you uh, the code we have. So, for the home, uh, easy publish YAML. In the easy publish YAML, you can see here that um, I added a line, controller. So I added a uh, custom controller. So this is uh, part of the power that we, you can have for uh, customizing a view for a content. You can, of course, match a template like, like it was done possible already in Legacy. Um, but you can also uh, point to your own controller. And if I open it, so the right controller, it's a standard uh, Symphony controller. The only difference is that uh, the base one you're extending is actually uh, the one for Easy Publish Core Bundle. Uh, the only difference is that you will have a, uh, a bit more uh, sh shorthand method, like uh, the Get Repository, for instance. So why did I do that? Because I want to uh, to get the list. Uh, of uh, the, 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 the ride list, the full ride list. Uh, here I don't use pagination, it would, ha it would have been a second step so that you can use PagerFanta for the nice, uh, uh, the nice pagination uh, stuff. But here is a very basic usage of the uh, API to request content. So I'm looking for the search service 
I could also have used uh, requested uh, the search service. So it's easy publish uh, search service. No? Sir, service search. Here it is. So auto completed by uh, Symphony. Uh, <laughs> Symphony, uh, the Symphony plugin. Uh, I'm I'm looking for um, locations, so I'm doing a location query uh, with uh, three filters. We want only visible locations because you can hide locations, of course, uh, of ride content type identifier and uh, under the current location. Uh, we want to be so, uh, them to be sorted by uh, pu published date, That's, and then we get the result. The result is actually an, a value object, uh, a result set. So we have search hits. Uh, this is what we're passing to the, the to the view. And instead of returning the like we would have done in uh, pure Symphony stuff, we just forwarding to the to the view controller, but with additional uh, variables. So this is why I have here both controller and template. I could have uh, rendered this one by uh, directly, but the good practice is to forward to the. Um, to the built-in view controller, so that uh, the, um, the view selection is still done dynamically. It will help you for previewing, for instance, previewing content when editing. That's very simple controller here. And of course, this should be done in a service, not in the controller. But this is just for an example. Uh, then in the home, I still have my header, my content, but instead of having the static stuff, see, this is uh, I'm looping against the, my my ride list, okay, um, and I'm doing a sub request here with an ESI. Why using an ESI? This is simply because when uh, when you edit a ride like uh, the one from Ravinge, it will also clear the cache for this, uh, this sub-view. You could use a um, uh, simple one, but usually we recommend to use ESI for that. Uh, so it's... Uh, we're using here the line view type. So it's different, like you explained before, it's, it's a different view for the right. So we, uh, we added this uh, view type here, and we can see that we have a new, uh, a new template here. So write.html.twig, we have now <coughs> the view line, which is, well, the markup uh, designed by the front-end developer. And same, we're using uh, easy field value, writer.name, and so on and so on. So it's the same kind of uh, template development, except that it's only for the few, uh, the, 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 the small template block. But it's very same, uh, very same, uh, how to say, uh, skill, uh, task. <laughs> Sorry. So that's basically it for, well, we did a few stuff. Um, well, for an experienced developer, well, it took me two hours to do everything like this, but when you're quite experienced with that, um, this should be, uh, with some experience, quite fast to do that, even with uh, adding the controller and, uh, and all the stuff. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it will depend on your business, on the business logic you need, uh, but this will, um, you, you will automate yourself a lot for this kind of stuff. Exp um, especially if you're, 
if you're uh, fond of uh, regular expressions. <laughs> <laughs> and there are really are plenty, plenty of resources about Twig itself. Actually, I would say that a big part of the challenge is actually more Twig than easy itself, at least when it comes to templates, because you have plenty of filters, different ways to loop, uh, and so on. So once you master Twig, and it's not that hard, no. uh, it's, it's really quick to uh, write code with it. Um, Maybe questions, if any? Because this kind of is, it shows like 70% of the integration work you would have to do. There are better ways to do parts of it, but that's kind of it when it comes to integrating HTML at least. Other things you would like to know in addition or things you disliked in what you saw or liked? Or both. Well, one thing I'm going to say then, uh, about this uh, list thing, if you have used legacy before, uh, that's kind of not how you did it. Uh, you did a fetch content list, or you don't do that anymore here, it's just... Well, some, somebody did a bundle, but I'm not even going to mention it. Uh, but we are working on something different. Uh, because right now, every, every time you want to list locations, uh, you have to do it manually. And it's, well, it's annoying, it shouldn't be like this. Uh, so we are uh, working, it's currently a pull request, on what uh, we call named queries, uh, where basically you can predefine the query we saw in the controller, uh, give it a name, like a unique identifier, maybe a late, latest writes lists, and just uh, do a render from your template to get this list uh, rendered. So it will also have template matching based on conditions, like I'm rendering a write list uh, with uh, this parameter and so on. Uh, so Actually, we have the full developer documentation for it available. You see how it's used here. So render a controller with a query. Say which query you want to use, uh, which view type you want. This should be familiar with what we had before. And optional parameters. For instance, you could say I only want intermediate or beginner rides. Um, it's, it's up to you. And this should prevent most of the um, control, custom controllers you have to write when it comes to listing stuff and it will be part of the next uh, major release. So 2015 or 9 or 10, actually, right? Yeah, and of course, uh, we will provide um, base, uh, basic um, uh, query types, uh, but of course, you will be able to write your own. So uh, for legacy users, it's very similar to fetch alias. Uh, so, but uh, without con uh, configuration magic, it's, uh, your query type will be using PHP code that you uh, will have full control uh, on. Oh, so it was actually documented before it was implemented. But it's still yeah. a pull request anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not finished, so. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, to go through the, the documentation. Uh, well, it's a bit b better than it was before. It was a bit reorganized. Um, usually, it's quite extensive, except for the author field type that we'll need to change, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you will have, uh, like, like in the reference, uh, all the twig functions available. Um, here, like for the, the easy field value you, we used, uh, but we have a couple of others, like uh, easy content name, or even, um, uh, what was it, I can't remember, easy is field empty. Sometimes uh, you need to check, you don't want to display an image if it's not, uh, uh, if it's not filled, and so on. <coughs> uh, you also, you will also find in the developer cookbooks, a few uh, nice recipes. Um, and I don't remember where it was again, but uh, okay. Whoa. Okay, doc.easy.no. Um, how you configure things, uh, how you work with content views like we just did what variables you have by default, um, 
So this um, is quite extensive. And of course, if it's not sufficient, uh, you can always uh, add comments here. In the future, it sh this should be uh, Git-based, so one can uh, contribute uh, uh, additional uh, documentation pages. That's it. Okay, so you're all ready for your own projects with the Easy Platform, aren't you? <laughs> Or maybe uh, you're all hang hungry. Okay, so thank you and uh, well, have fun and uh, uh, bon appétit. <laughs>